Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to do an example of solving and graphing inequalities in one variable, but before we do, we need to talk about the golden rule of inequalities, which we just discovered with our investigation. We know that if we multiply or divide by a negative, we saw our symbol flip, true? So that is the golden rule of inequalities. Whenever you multiply or divide, both sides of an inequality by a negative number You must flip the inequality symbol. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys put a small title above our steps here. And I do have highlighters. I will pass them out as we start dealing with glue if you wanna add color to yours. Right here, I want you to put steps to follow to solve inequalities. They are very similar to the steps that we follow when we are using this foldable. But since we know these steps hopefully pretty well by now, I've got a simplified version that works with inequalities. Step one, get the variable by itself on one side of the inequality. It's kind of a deceptive step one because there's a lot of things you might have to do before you can do that. You might have to distribute. You might have to simplify and combine like terms and then start to move things to both sides of the inequality just like we were practicing with equations, right? But our goal before we can start solving the inequality is to simplify it and get the variable to one side. And then once we've done that, we want to check the order. Think about our flip flops. We want the variable first. We want the inequality symbol second. And we want the constant on the right. Because that helps us with graphing as we saw yesterday. Step three, circle the number on the number line. Step four is a question. Open or closed circle.
Step five is shade appropriately. That means the circle and the line or the arrow. I want you guys to think back to yesterday. Maybe even look at your foldable. <clears throat> Which symbols get open circles? The one with the line equal to something. Greater than? Or less than? Less than? Or equal to? Not equal to. What gets closed circles? Equal to. Anything that's equals. Equal to, greater than or equal to, what am I missing? Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. So, I want us to think about this. This doesn't work just for solving equations. It also works for solving inequalities. We're going to do it with this problem right here. Look at the equations. Are there any grouping symbols? No. So what does it say? Skip to the next one. Skip to the next step. Look at each side of the equation. Are there like terms on the left side? Are there like terms on the right side? Yes. Yes. Does 5 have any like terms with its side? Does negative three X have anything on the left? No. no, the like terms are there. They're just on the opposite sides of the inequality. That's step three. Yes. Mm -hmm. Step three is, do you have variables on both sides of the equal sign? Yes. yes. What does yes say? Choose the variable with what? The smaller. Undo that variable by adding to both sides of the equation. In this case, the inequality. Which of these has the smaller coefficient? X is coefficient is a positive what? This is the smaller coefficient, isn't it? So we're going to add positive 3X to both sides. And we get 5 is less than or equal to 13 plus what? 4X. And then what? Do you have a constant added or subtracted on both sides of the equal sign? Mm -hmm. Yes. What do we do? Choose the constant is on the same side as the what? What's on the same side as the variable? So let's subtract the 13. 5 minus 13 gives us negative 8 is less than or equal to 4x. What am I dividing by? Okay. Am I dividing by a positive number or a negative number? Because I'm dividing by a positive, my symbol doesn't change, does it? So I end up with negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Is that in the order that we want? No. Honestly, this here just got us to step one here. We just got the variable by itself on one side of the inequality. Mm -hmm. Check the order. Is it in the right order? No. no. So we want to switch it, don't we? Yes. So I'm going to rewrite this as x, and I'm going to put it up above the number line because it's the title for my graph negative 2, and instead of less than or equal to, what happens to this? It's greater than or equal to. Okay, step 3 says circle the number on the number line. That's great, but first we actually have to put numbers on the number line, don't we? Yes. We're trying to graph negative 2. What numbers do you guys want to put on there? 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That works, right? OK, 
Okay, it says circle the number on the number line. Ask the question, should it be an open or closed circle? That's step four. What kind of circle? Closed. And shade appropriately. What direction? To the right. To the right. To the left. I know. I always think of that song. Okay, so who feels like this foldable could become very, very important as we continue our work this year? It is, and I'm really excited about it because it's the first year I've ever used it. I found it this summer. I think it clarifies what needs to happen in a way I haven't seen before. It might even be a page that we put a sticky note on so you guys always know where to flip to that page. Like it's a tab, right? It's important. It is important. So, it is now time to do some gluing. Yay! Here's where we're at. I'm doing this really quickly for the people who are new to our class so they might get a sense, but I will still put pictures on my uh, on Google class, or, uh, Classroom later. We have our binder tab from yesterday, yes? If you were absent yesterday, I just want to point out really quickly, this tab, which I gave you, I hope, in the stuff I paper clipped together, it has our objectives. We're right here. Oops. I can solve and graph inequalities. What section of the book is that in? It's in 1-5. That's important because sometimes it takes us a couple days to get through everything. But if you want to go home and look at your book and see what examples are in there, the objective always goes with the section of the book that I've highlighted. Okay, and then notice those of you gluing, I'm seeing my new people. It's folded so it fits. You guys saw that? Okay. Next two pages should have types of solutions, variables on both sides, which is this trifold, and our favorite new foldable, yes? And then turn the page. We should have literal equations. I believe this one should be first. We're starting our inequalities with how to graph them, which you guys kind of did when you worked last week with the flow vocabulary. Which, by the way, some people are missing that assignment. Please just turn in the turning basket. I'm sure you have it in your stuff. I use six whole dots of glue there. It does not take a lot. Then we are going to turn the page. And we are going to do, actually, I think right hand pages are what you see most often. I know this for a fact, actually, from your book. When you open a page, what do you see first? What's on the right side? This investigation we did to prove the rule, it's less important than remembering what the rule is. So what I would like to do is actually skip this left page for now, and we're going to put this here. And you can go back and decorate your flip-flops if you'd like later. So right now we've glued on the right page here, yes. We've turned the page and skipped a page and we've glued on the right page here because order matters. And then I'm going to turn the page and we're gluing these like this.
And yes, I'm aware I still have the video running because I want to get the assignment started here. This is what the top of your binder paper should look like. And we are going to do a few problems from the book today. The assignment is page 34. Numbers 15 to 26, 29 to 32. So these all go after this? I would like you to have these ready at the beginning of class tomorrow with questions. What I mean by that is you should have tried at least every one of them and if you got stuck, come in with a question. Can you use your notes as you're working? Yes, please. <coughs> 